concerned, uh, I want you to think back to 1999, to February 1999, which was the time when army leaders conspired to intimidate the population before the vote in September as to whether East Timor wanted to be independent of Indonesia, which had invaded and uh, was, had occupied it. The, uh, what happened was that the army uh, armed or set up militia groups in each of the 13 provinces with the object of creating havoc if the referendum was lost, the UN referendum was lost uh, by Indonesia and if the vote went to independence. The chief conspirators were intelligence chiefs in, in the Copasus Special Force reporting to General Zaki Anwar. Together with the East Timor's military governor, Abilio Soresh, and the militia leader, Eureka Guterres. The collaboration between the Indonesian military and the freelance militias was obvious to all observers in the months before the referendum. They worked together quite brazenly. They were responsible for a series of massacres, including the one at the Kusha Church, which uh, killed uh, where, where 67 people were shot uh, or hacked to death. And the purpose of this pre-referendum terror was to spread the militia's message. What's the point of voting for independence if you're going to be killed the next day? There could be no doubt about the certainty of a bloodbath after a yes vote, unless the UN put in more, put in troops uh, on the ground to prevent it. But the UN didn't. You know, uh, it was opposed by uh, Indonesia, and the vote was held on 30th of August. It was obvious that if the UN announced the result for independence, that there that bloodbath would begin. The UN announced the result. 78.5% in favour of independence. Well, overnight, the militias and sections of the Indonesian army began to kill, loot, and scorch the earth. It was wrong, it's wrong to say that they ran amok because there was method in their madness. Typically, first people to be killed were the intelligentsia and professional people rounded up and murdered. So, uh, the scorched earth policy forced half a million East Timorese to flee into the jungle. 130,000 were forced at gunpoint to West Timor. 14 Catholic priests and nuns were murdered in Dili, as well as the head of the Protestant church. Uh, of course, this was in part because of negligence, uh, responsibility of the UN for going ahead with the referendum when they must have known what would, what would happen. But, uh, and it severely shocked Kofi Annan. He said, we can't stand by and allow the people of East Timor to be killed. But uh, the UN Security Council did stand by for eight shameful days, uh, and America waited vainly for the Defense Chief, General Waranto, to restore discipline. Uh, China made clear that it would veto any armed intervention. So with the block of China's veto, uh, it was China was quite happy for two weeks for tens of hundreds, thousands of people to be killed in the slash and burn. And finally, of course, uh, President Clinton did what he should have done at the outset. Uh, he threatened President Habibi with the loss of billions of dollars in loans unless he permitted a UN peacekeeping force to enter East Timor. Uh, and the Australian forces, uh, with the Americans cowardly uh, shrieking back in the rear, uh, the Australian and English forces went in. Uh, miraculously, without loss of life, the uh, cowardly militias uh, shrank into the uh, bushes and across to, uh, to West Timor. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, they'd done their work and East Timor was in ruins with buildings torched and the earth scorched by the Indonesian soldiers who uh, had slunk across the border. So, then there was the uh, investigations, the finding of mass graves, and, and so forth. 
uh, and then a question of what to do about those who were responsible. Who were responsible. The um, General Guaranto was allowed, I, I think the, um, the important thing to remember at this point was that Asian countries were opposed to any court. The obvious way to deal with it was for the, I, the international court system that had already covered Rwanda and the Balkans to be extended to cover these atrocities uh, committed uh, at a UN, after a UN referendum in East Timor. But Japan, China, India and the Philippines uh, didn't want to embarrass Indonesia. They voted against uh, at the UN a Human Rights Commission uh, investigation. Uh, so, uh, the China made clear that it would veto any extension of the criminal court system uh, to cover Indonesia. So, uh, the Human Rights Committee did set up a low-key investigation. Indonesia refused to grant visas for its members to enter West Timor uh, or Jakarta to interview witnesses. But then, miraculously, of course, the transition to democracy in late 1999 in Indonesia itself brought a popular demand for human rights, and the Human Rights Commission, established by Parliament, uh, appointed Munir and others to investigate, and that was when he discovered uh, ex clear evidence of the massacres in East Timor, how the bodies of the victims were rushed and transported across the border for secret disposal in West Timor. Uh, his inquiry called in and cross-examined generals and uncovered the conspiracy to arm the militias and to fund them from East Timor's civil administration budget. Munir's report in 2000 accused 33 leaders of crimes against humanity and demanded their prosecution under the command responsibility principle, which is the principle that uh, although as a commander you don't know or approve of the crime itself, you are nonetheless responsible at a lesser level, but responsible nonetheless in international criminal law, if you fail to stop the crime, if you refuse to stop the crimes, and if you refuse to punish their perpetrators. That's the command responsibility principle uh, that uh, Munir's inquiry um, recommended. The Indonesian government uh, rejected, of course, any kind of international court, a hybrid court suggested by the UN with Indonesian judges working with international judges was rejected, but uh, it promised to bring the suspects to judge, to, to Justice. Uh, Megawati, the next president, was put under strong international pressure to do that, and the trials at the Human Rights Court began in Jakarta in March 2002. Not the 33 that uh, Munir had recommended, but 18 military officers and militia leaders were accused of a crime against humanity by permitting widespread and systematic militia attacks on civilians, hundreds of whom lost their lives. General Waranto, the leader who should have been prosecuted under the command responsibility principle, was allowed uh, to resign honorably from cabinet in return for an amnesty. There was an agreement not to prosecute him so long as he stood out, got out of the way for a while. I think his desire for publicity soon came back and he became a pop singer, I think. He <laughs> issued a, uh, a pop song and stood for election. Um, the, the Attorney General lacked the courage to prosecute Saki Anwar, uh, who in my view is most responsible, and the other serious uh, senior army officers implicated in the killings. And in, of course, there was a little tribunal of international judges in East Timor that did convict the local militia members, quite a lot of them, 50 of them, but of course they were fairly small fry.